Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Tasha Miller Griffith. I'm a textile artisan and I am proud to get to teach at North House Folk School sometimes and other places too. And today we're going to have a new adventure and show you some things on video. And specifically what we're going to do today is some mending. We're going to learn my favorite, one of my very favorite techniques for mending anything that's knitted. So like socks, sweaters, your mittens, things like that. Um, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here's an example of the kind of mending that I'm going to show you. Um, this is a sock that obviously I've had for a long time and it's been much worn and loved and uh, was given to me in a special way. Um, so I've held on to it all this time. And you can see if you look at this sock both how many times I have mended it and also how my technique and yarn choice have improved over time, which, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later. One thing that I really love about mending is how it's a way to care not only for objects, but for all the people and animals and plants that have contributed to bringing this thing into my life by keeping it going. I really feel like I'm honoring all of them. And mending is also a really grounding activity that encourages me to be present uh, stitch by stitch, which is really lovely. Here's a sock that's a little bit newer that hasn't had quite so many men so far and also I've learned enough to choose an appropriate yarn. So some advantages of this technique or why you would choose to do this instead of a more traditional darning that you may have seen that looks more like a woven patch is that this method duplicates the stitch structure of the knitting exactly, which means it has the same stretch as the original fabric does, and it also has the same thickness, which means you're going to get a nice cushy patch, which is great because a lot of times these are right under your heel or right on your elbow places that tend to wear. Um, you can see here that I have fixed this sock twice so far, so you can see a little color change right here, and I'm getting better at blending the mending together, um, but this is kind of how I personally want it to look, where I want you to be able to see that I have mended it and I'm caring for my sock, but it looks neat and clean. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through this step by step, um, and I'm gonna start with a neat trick if you don't know for, um, for threading a needle. Some people actually call this needling the thread instead. So you wanna have a tiny, tiny bit of yarn sticking up between your two fingers and squash it really tight and then press the needle, the eye of the needle, down on top of that. And 90% of the time, that works great. Um, this needle, this is a tapestry needle, so it has a long eye that that thick yarn can go through, and it has a blunt tip, which is really important because you want to slide it around the stitches and not pierce through the stitches. And I have about 18 inches, two feet of yarn. You don't want to have very much more than that because it's going to get abraded by working and you can always bury more ends in later. Okay, so now we're going to do the actual stitch on my little sample here so you can see where I've opened up a hole. And normally I would make stitch into quite a few stitches around the hole and for now I'm just going to do a few around so that it won't take quite as long and you can still see what we're doing. So I'm going to just put the needle in a little ways, a little ways away, doesn't really matter where, and then bring it up at the bottom of the first stitch that I'm going to duplicate, which is this gray one that's the lower of the gray two. And then I'm, so now this is the first stitch that I'm going to duplicate, the lower one on this gray row. So I'm going to take the needle behind the two legs of the stitch above, pull it through. So now it's wrapped around and remember that we're duplicating the same structure of the stitches with the needle and thread. So now I'm going to go into the bottom of this stitch, follow, you can even see where that gray stitch goes behind. I'm following that pattern. Oop, I don't want to catch the tail right now. And then the same thing on the next stitch, I'm going to go behind the stitch above. So that wraps around and then over one stitch and just keep going like that. So again, all right. 
So this is going to be the last stitch for this row. And then what I'm going to do next is a little bit important. So I'm going to come over to the next stitch just like I was going to do another one. But then instead of going above, I'm going to just catch this one little bar with the thread is going over that bar. And then I'm going to go back into the top of the last stitch that I did. And this anchors this all my stitching into the surrounding stitches, which is really important, especially if you're going back like on the sock and you're going to make two, you know that you're going to make another patch next to this one in the future. Having those tied together is going to be really important to not just end up with a hole. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm working back from left to right. And then over. And now that I'm coming near the hole. You can see here how those stitches wrap around the back, how the gray wraps around the back of the white. And I'm going to do that same thing with my new pink thread like that. I'm going to hang on to it so that the thread doesn't pop off. Come around and into this stitch there like that. So again, I'm going to turn by making this stitch coming out to the next one, catching this one little horizontal bar and going back into the top of the stitch. So now I've come to the stitches that are hanging out loose below the hole. And when you get there, you can just leave a loop here and hang on to it. It can also be really useful to have a knitting needle or a toothpick or a skewer or something to hold these stitches. So going around and back down. And now the knitting needle is just going to hold these stitches for me. And then I'll come out on the side of the hole. And do the same turn around one bar and coming back up. So now uh, this is kind of the exciting conclusion. We come to the stitches. This is the stitch that's totally missing. So I'm going to pick up the stitch from the knitting needle onto my tapestry needle. And then if you've been watching you see how the top of each stitch comes across. So I'm going to grab this loop and then this loop. And these are the two legs of the stitch um, above the one I'm working on. They just look different because there's nothing to hold them together. But I'm doing the same motion, see like that. And then I'm going to go back into that stitch. I normally would pick up this guy. So now we don't need that knitting needle anymore. There's one completed stitch. I'm going to come across same thing into the same loop that's holding this stitch. The next loop over, just like so. And then there we are. So I'll finish that stitch. Now, normally, as I said, I would do at least one more row to anchor everything, but for demonstration purposes, when you're done, then stab the needle straight into the, into your fabric, turn it over, and you can see how this, this mimics the structure both on the front and the back. It's just the same. These are the two little tails from where I cut my hole. And then to finish, just anchor your thread by taking a few little stitches. You don't want to go all the way through 
the fabric. Just take a few little stitches through the back of the loops on a diagonal is nice. If you want it to be really secure, you can turn and go do the same thing on a diagonal a little bit on the opposite diagonal. And then trim your thread. You can leave a little bit sticking out so that it's not tempted to pull to the front. And then I'll pull up my end from where we started and do the same thing leaving it in. And then you're done. You don't have to make a rectangle either or a little square. As you can see, here's an example where I started making like an oval shape. You could continue this. You can make really any shape that you want, and that's one fun way to get creative. So here are a few more things to keep in mind and some kind of my best tips for making this come out really well. If you look at the heel of this sock, can you see where there's a spot where the, the thread has gotten, the yarn has gotten really thin and it's just about to break, but it hasn't yet. And this is a perfect time to mend this area of the sock where you still have all the structure of the stitches to follow, but there's no hole yet, but you know there's gonna be one. You know that, that um, this is gonna be where that mend needs to happen. And I would go ahead and duplicate a good section of stitches around here rather than just, it's tempting to just do this one little row, but reality is if this row is getting so worn, then probably the ones next to it are too, and you might as well go ahead and make a bigger, a bigger mend like you saw on the other purple sock, and that's gonna last longer. Sometimes you don't quite get to it in time and you end up with a hole like this, which is also fine. Um, the other thing that I want to point out about this sweater in particular, so I'll hold it up and see if you can see. This is one of my very favorite tricks, is if you hold something up to the light, you can usually see exactly where the worn places are so much more easily. So here you can see there's a hole, obviously, but then around the hole, like right there, if you can see that there's a, some very thin yarns. These tails that you can see are actually an old patch which also tells me that this area gets a lot of wear. So when I go to mend this, I'm gonna duplicate the stitches across this whole area, or not just this little hole, but everything that I can see that's thin, and that's gonna make that patch last a lot longer. And uh, finally, I wanna show you this, which is a little bit more, uh, takes a little bit more practice, but you can definitely do it. So this, fabric is very, the stitches are tiny, 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 and you can't replicate every one, that's okay. You can still do the same structure and just go for, go over two or three stitches. So for every stitch that you make, there's two or three stitches in the fabric below, and if you can keep that rhythm going, more or less, you'll come out with a mend like this, which still looks really cute and still has the stretch of the knit fabric. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about yarn choice. So this kind of yarn, can you see how there's only one strand of it and it's very fuzzy and it doesn't look tight at all. The fibers are loose in here. And so all those things mean that this yarn's not gonna stand up very well to abrasion. It's gonna peel and come apart pretty easily. So this would be a good yarn to fix like say a hat or a shawl maybe, something that's not gonna get a lot of wear and that would be fine. But if you're gonna fix a sweater or especially a sock, something that gets a lot of hard wear, you wanna look for a yarn more like this. So can you see how this yarn, it has a few strands which are called plies, which are all twisted up together um, and each one is pretty tightly spun so it almost looks a little bit more shiny. There's still ends of course because it's there's fibers, there's wool. Um, but a yarn like this where more of the ends are tucked in, as many of the fibers are tucked in as possible and tightly twisted up, is gonna last a lot longer. One other thing to think about is matching the size or the weight or the thickness, however you wanna think about it, of your yarn to your project. So you wanna have about the same as the yarns that are originally in it. If your yarn that you're mending with is too thin, and there's an actual hole there, 
then that part of your garment will be kind of thin. And if it's too thick, then it just gets very stiff and bulky. And you could even see that on the red sock that I showed you before, some of the earlier yarns. So just experiment. Try for something that's about the same weight as your project. You may have wondered what this lumpy thing sitting on the table is. This is a darning egg. And um, this one belonged to my grandmother. But these are very useful anytime you're working on a sock or a mitten or something small. The idea is that you slide this inside the sock and then you have something to hit with the needle so that you know you're not stitching the two layers of the sock together, which is really helpful. If you don't have an egg like this, you can use a smooth scrap of wood. You can even use an apple, anything that will go inside the sock and keep the two layers apart. Okay, so I hope you've gotten some good tips and tricks and inspiration for your mending and you're ready to go tackle something in your own closet. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'm always really happy to help if I can and I hope to see you soon, hopefully in person.